Hello. Today I will discuss with you my fish disease case number 20 about the physical disease. Yeah, I give it another name because it's an unusual disease we are dealing with in the last coming years where the aquarium fish get large bubbles on their body, on their skin. We call it the vesicles. And some people say it looks like worms. So I will discuss several photographs and several fish I received during my work as a fish doctor. And then you got these kind of tetras, like a rummy nose or a neon tetra. They have bubbles, kind of bubbles or physicals on their body. Or this rummy nose. You see the different symptoms. I received this from a friend. Uh, these kind of bubbles here on the side. Very strange appearances, which we are not used to see. And it's something just recent. In the last couple of years, we are seeing this more and more. And some people say, well, I see a worm infection with this. Look, they have worms here. There is a worm there. Those whitish worms. But I tell you, there are no worms there. Here the same on this cardinal tetra. You see this worm-like appearance. Something sitting in a bubble, sticking on the gills or the or the fin or usually on the on the the skin of the fish here on this uh, black emperor tetra a worm like infection and i call it a vesicle disease to give it a name because i used to give names when i give training to the people i don't call it bubble disease or something like that because it looks kind of like a gas bubble it's a vesicle disease see it's like this it's like a worm here yes of course it looks like it but well, a microscopic examination can tell us what's going on. We see the Corridoras with many vesicles. Look at this, all of the body. And later on, those white appearances, white worm-like appearances uh, of our features will come into the bubbles here on this Loricaridae. All those bubbles appearing. It's not gas bubble disease. No, it's something else. And it's dermocystidium. That's the, how can I say, the parasitic infection. It's, uh, we call it a, sitting in a vesicle. Look at this. Here we see it magnified. I received this from a, a colleague, veterinary researcher in Brazil. And you see them here sitting all here on these bubbles. You see this worm-like feature sitting in there. And it's a dermocystium. And I'll explain what dermocystium is. See here again. Really looks like needy, like like little worms. Yes, that's why people try to use anti-worm medications, but it's not working. Uh, unfortunately, you will do nothing with that. So this is what we see when we take a microscope, a macroscopic view. It's a kind of fungus or a sporozoa. There is still discussion among the scientists how to. Uh, catalog this kind of infection. It belongs to the mesomycetozoa. It's something like a mix between the fungus and the sporozoa. Here we see a larger magnification, the different spores. And what we see here in that bubble usually, it's the reproductive stage. Those are white hephi. The white hephi, this is what you hear, it looks dark of course in the microscopic examination, and that we called a plasmodium. And that contains many spores. And that's the way it will reinfect other fish in the aquarium. That's how it will spread. This will break open and the spores will distribute and reinfect the other fish in the aquarium. Here we see another dermocystidium or physical disease in a pangasius. And this is the real gas bubble disease. Sometimes appearing. This is on a marine fish. So... Easy to diagnose? No. I can imagine that people sometimes have a wrong uh, diagnostic observation that they call it uh, yeah, but like a bubble disease, but it's a uh, microscope helps us. This also the white appearances on the skin. This is a Pleistophora sporozoa infection. I will explain that in one of my next cases. And here it's a white spot is called caused by beta sarcaria, worm larvae, it's all something else. And this is a real worm. This is a real bubble. We have a real worm. When we opened that bubble, we found this large nematode, longer than the fish itself and the rubinose. 
This is coming from a wild rummy nose from Colombia. But this is also a real worm infection. We open it, and it can look like dermocystidium or the physical disease, and we open it and we found a real nematode inside in this wild cardinal. Well, this is sometimes common. Well, not common, it's usual. We can find this in wild fish. Well, what can we do about a treatment for this dermocystidium or physical disease? Well, treat the diseased fish in a quarantine tank. Try to remove it and put it separate. Because in the aquarium, this diseased fish can continue to spread this fungus or spores, what else, to the other fish in the aquarium. You also can treat the aquarium with an antifungal medication like Desamor. We had some positive results to kill the spores which are, could be distributed. Follow the directions of the medication. Uh, if it will treat the fish which has already the big bubble or the vesicles with the large hyphae, the large uh, plasmodia, no, no, because it's there. But you can try to prevent the spreading, and that's what you should do, or the reinfection. The very sick fish you better euthanize, and then you also go to check where you get the fish from. Do you get it from a specific shop, a specific supply? Because usually the source is from the breeder. It can be, you can also cause the problem, but usually the breeder is breeding this disease in his say, fish tanks or in his ponds by having a, a serious problem, uh, a poor condition with that there's dermocystium in the tank. Sometimes fish food can be the source of the problem. Several studies pointed out already many years ago, for instance, like Shepard Klaus uh, published in his book that, that Crustacea or Daphnia-like uh, uh, copepods can be a risk factor for introducing this uh, fungal or parasitic infection. You can help the fish with immunostimulants and uh, recovery food like our Dr. Dr. Baslier Bives' food aloe vera or our professional treat. These help the fish to repair to recover. But like I said, a very sick fish, very difficult. Try to separate and the ones with the very large uh, vesicles with the white look like worm infections separate them and they can't attack and maybe it cures and goes away uh, and, and, and after a time it disappears and then you can put the fish back after you might have been treated that with an antifungal medication so it's it's something coming up uh, try to, to follow your fish observe your fish regularly uh, usually it appears between the same kind of group of fish the same species, because it's from the same origin usually the fish come from, usually it's the cardinal tetras on a farm or the rummy nose, and, and well, try to prevent the spreading. So I hope uh, you can be stayed informed with more news uh, from my uh, Patreon, and you, you can follow me on my Patreon channel, Gerald Baslier. So I hope I can give you the best training for fish disease diagnosis. So learn more about Fish diseases also in my books, which you can order and the link will be presented below in my YouTube channel. So I hope I can keep you happy as aquarist. Good luck. Bye-bye.